Modern physics developed at around about the same time that wars were breaking out all over the world, particularly in Europe. And a lot of the advances that came out of the development of modern physics contributed to the war effort. And so science could no longer be completely separate and divorced from the political ramifications of the time. We don't have any direct evidence of a debate between Einstein and Planck over political and scientific issues, but we can look at the actions of these two famous scientists to see where their moral compass was pointed. At times, Planck and Einstein disagreed. However, they were also friends and colleagues. In fact, in 1929, Einstein was awarded the Max Planck Medal for Outstanding Contribution to Theoretical Physics. Planck himself awarded the medal. Einstein's famous for a couple of things. One is certainly E equals MC squared, but another is his pacifism. When World War I broke out, 93 intellectuals, including Max Planck, signed a document in defense of Germany's actions in the war. But Einstein and a couple of his colleagues signed a different document, which was essentially an anti-war manifesto. During World War I, Planck, like many other German scientists, believed that Germany was the supreme power in scientific research. He was incredibly patriotic. In fact, at one time he said, as long as this war lasts, Germans have only one task, to serve the German nation with all their strength. Einstein once said, nationalism is an infantile disease. It is the measles of mankind. When Adolf Hitler came to power in 1933, Max Planck was arguably the most well-known and well-respected German scientist. He was greatly influential in all German science policy. Einstein was already in the United States when the National Socialists came to power in Germany, and he was a prime symbol of the very kind of Jewish internationalist influence that Hitler's Germany was doing its very best to eradicate around the world. Einstein announced that he would never return to Germany, given that the principles of equality, justice and liberty were no longer valid for its citizens. This statement caused outrage in Germany. Both Planck and Einstein served as members of the elite Prussian Academy of Sciences, but following this statement, Planck urged Einstein to resign. But Einstein informed them that actually he had already done so. Although Planck later regretted this incident, he played a vital role in excluding Einstein from the German scientific culture. Later, all Jews would become excluded. So, in fact, Planck played an important role in the anti-Semitism of the National Socialist Party. There was only one case, albeit a very important case, when Einstein appeared to go against his pacifist principles, and that was in the development of the atomic bomb. When it was discovered that uranium could undergo chain nuclear reactions and in the process release an enormous amount of energy, and that that energy could be used as a weapon, Einstein wrote a letter to President Roosevelt in the United States urging him to put a lot of funding to develop an American atomic bomb because he was convinced that Germany was going to get there first. German scientists also had an atomic bomb project, led by Heisenberg. Although Planck's physical insights were necessary to building the bomb in the end, he didn't play any direct role in the Nazi project. It's interesting to note, however, that a lot of the scientists involved in the Manhattan Project receive a lot of praise for their work, whereas a lot of the scientists involved in the German bomb project receive a lot of criticism. The difference is not in the work they were carrying out, but in the governments that they served. Atomic energy research continued, but it wasn't until the bombing of Pearl Harbor that it really took off. And in 1942, it became what is known as the Manhattan Project, that went on to create the bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Ultimately, Planck realised that social and political forces could influence his scientific research. He was a patriot and wanted to serve the German nation, but he was constantly faced with a dilemma, which was when his service to the German nation came into conflict with his service for science. Einstein believed that science as a human endeavour extended well beyond any national boundaries, and rather than the pursuit of science being for the benefit of any one state or country, he felt that science should be for the benefit of the entire world. In November 1952, Einstein was offered the presidency of the State of Israel. He turned the offer down, continuing with his scientific research. He felt he would be able to make a better contribution to the world in the name of science than in the name of politics. It's clear to us today that science, and in particular physics, can be affected by politics. 
Since 1945, many governments around the world have realised that science can be a source of political power. This, in turn, can influence the direction of scientific research.